to be coming up with equations of lines in standard form. But these lines are going to be unique in the fact that they will all involve being parallel or perpendicular to other lines. Let's first start with an example involving parallel lines. Our example here is to find the equation of a line in standard form, which is parallel to the line y equals 3 fourths x plus 7. And it has the same y-intercept as this line, y equals 2x plus 6 fifths. First, let's start by understanding what we know is true about parallel lines. Well, we know that parallel lines never touch each other. They have the same steepness, or in math terms, we say that they have the same slope. This is useful for us because when we write equations of lines, especially in the form y equals mx plus b, we know that their slope is represented by this m value. Well, lines that have the same slope, or are parallel, will have the same m value. So if we look at our line y equals 3 fourths x plus 7, we can see that the m value is 3 fourths. So our line will have the same slope, 3 fourths. We're also given information regarding the y-intercept of the line that we want to create. The line, our y-intercept, is going to be the same as the y-intercept in this line, y equals 2x plus 6 fifths. We also know that in the form y equals mx plus b, the b value gives us the y-intercept. So for y equals 2x plus 6 fifths, the b value is positive 6 fifths. That is the y-intercept for the line that we want to create. Putting all of this together, we can form our equation using the slope of the first line, because it's parallel, and the same y-intercept of the second line. So y equals 3 fourths x plus 6 fifths. And that would be the equation in y equals mx plus b form. But we want it in standard form. So remembering the rules to getting an equation in standard form, we first want to move everything to the left. This 3 fourths x will move over to the left and become negative, so negative 3 fourths x. The y is already on the left, it will stay positive. And the 6 fifths will move over and it will become negative as well. This will all equal 0 on the right hand side. Rule number two for standard form is that we can't have a negative value out in front of x. So we will want to multiply this entire equation by negative one to change the signs. But rule number three also states that we can't have any fractions. So in order to get rid of the fractions, we need to multiply by the lowest common multiple for the denominators. Our denominators are four and five the lowest common multiple between 4 and 5 is 20. So we're going to multiply everything in this equation not only by negative 1 to change the signs, but also by 20. So let's multiply by negative 20. We'll have negative 20 times negative 3 fourths x and negative 20 times y and negative 20 times negative 6 fifths. We'll also have negative 20 times 0, but we know that this will just end up equaling 0. Negative 20 times negative 3 fourths, that we know the negatives will cancel out here, and the 20 and the 4 can reduce. The 20 will reduce to a 5, and the 4 will, will reduce to a 1. Negative 20 times y will be negative 20y. For negative 20 times negative 6 fifths, the 20 and the 5 can also reduce to 4 and 1. And we know negative 20 times 0 is 0. So we end up with 5 times 3 times x, which is 15x. Negative 20 times y is negative 20y. And Negative 4 times negative 6 will turn positive, so that's plus 24. 
and all of this equals zero. And that's our equation in standard form. Let's move on to an example that uses perpendicular lines. We need to come up with an equation of a line that is perpendicular to another line, y equals 3x plus 7, and our line has to go through the point 2, 4. So first, what do we know about perpendicular lines? Well, perpendicular lines meet each other at 90 degree angles. We also call those right angles. There's something specific that we also know about right angles, or lines that meet at right angles. We know that those lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. Well, what are negative reciprocals? Negative reciprocals, all that means is it's the flipped version of the fraction and also a different sign. So for example, if we had 3 fourths, the negative reciprocal to 3 fourths would be the flipped version, 4 thirds, but also negative, so negative 4 thirds. Those are negative reciprocals. If we had a whole number like negative 8, the negative reciprocal would be 1 over 8, but positive because we need to switch signs. So now that we know what perpendicular lines are and how their slopes relate, we can find out what the slope is for our line by realizing it has to be perpendicular to the slope in this line, y equals 3x plus 7. The slope here is positive 3. So a slope that's perpendicular to positive 3, we're going to write this as m with this little symbol down here that means perpendicular slopes, or a perpendicular, we know our slope will be 1 third, because that's the reciprocal of 3, but negative because it needs to be the negative reciprocal. And that's the slope we're going to use for our line. It also has to go through this point 2, 4. So let's start by writing out our equation in y equals mx plus b form. We're going to insert our slope of negative 1 third into the equation, but we're also going to insert the point 2, 4 x value being 2 and the y value being 4. So let's put a 4 in for y, our slope of negative 1 third, x value of 2, and we don't know the b value yet. That's what we're solving for. 2 times negative 1 third, well that's equal to negative 2 thirds, remembering that a whole number multiplied to a fraction, we just multiply it to the numerator. Add the b, and to get b by itself, we're going to need to move this negative 2 thirds over to the left hand side. It will become positive when we do that. So 4 plus 2 thirds equals b. In order to add 4 and 2 thirds, we need a common denominator. And to get that, we'll change this 4 so it has a denominator of 3. 4 times 3 is 12, so 4 turns into 12 thirds plus 2 thirds equals b. Or b will equal 14 thirds. So now we know our perpendicular slope, negative 1 third, that we're going to use in our line, and our y-intercept, 14 thirds. So let's write out our equation of our line. y equals negative 1 third, that's our slope, x, and our y-intercept of 14 thirds, so plus 14 thirds. This is the equation in y equals mx plus b form. To get this into standard form, move everything over to the left. So positive 1 third x plus y minus 14 thirds equals 0. 
The x term is positive, which is great, but we have fractions. So in order to get rid of these fractions, we're going to multiply by the lowest common multiple. And in this case, because all our denominators are 3, the lowest common multiple is 3. 3 times 1 third is just 1, so we're just left with x. 3 times y is 3y. And 3 times negative 14 thirds, the 3's will cancel, and we're just left with negative 14. And our equation in standard form doesn't look too menacing. x plus 3y minus 14 equals 0. And that's how we can negotiate perpendicular lines when creating our equation. Okay, one final example. Let's say we need to come up with an equation of a line that is perpendicular to 2x plus 3y equals 6 and has the same x-intercept as this line, 4x minus 3y equals 5. Some interesting things here because these equations are not written in y equals mx plus b form. They're written in sort of a hybrid standard form. So let's deal with the fact that we need to have a line that is perpendicular to 2x minus 3y equals 6. When we hear perpendicular, we have to think of slopes. And not only slopes, but a negative reciprocal slope. Well, how do we find the slope of a line 2x minus 3y equals 6? An easy way is to get this into slope y-intercept form. Once it's there, we can then figure out what the slope is and then know that our line has to be a negative reciprocal slope. So let's convert this into y equals mx plus b. This y term we're going to keep on the left. It's negative, so negative 3y. And we're going to move everything else over to the right. The 2x will move over. It becomes negative. The 6 is already on the right, so it'll stay there and stay positive. Now we'll divide everything by negative 3. We need this y term all by itself. Can't have anything else there. So negative 3 is cancel. We're left with y. Negative 2 over negative 3. These negatives will reduce or cancel. So we're left with just 2 thirds. And that x is still there. And 6 divided by negative 3. A positive and a negative makes a negative. 6 divided by 3 is 2. We're mostly concerned here with the slope, so the slope is 2 thirds. So for us, the negative reciprocal slope is going to be the flip of that and negative, so negative 3 over 2. That's going to be the slope for our line. Let's put a box around that so we don't forget it. The second fact we're given is that our line has to have the same x-intercept as this line, 4x minus 3y equals 5. This isn't as useful as knowing the y-intercept, because the y-intercept we can read directly in y equals mx plus b form. It's the b. But an x-intercept, we don't have an easy way to, to read it. But we do know that all x-intercepts have something in common they all lie on the x-axis. And anything on the x-axis has a y value that equals 0. This is going to be important because we can figure out the x-intercept in this line by setting y equal to 0. So in other words, 4x minus 3 times 0 will equal 5. 3 times 0 is simply 0, so this will just disappear. So 4x equals 5. And if we divide both sides by 4, x equals 5 fourths. This gives us our x-intercept. Remember, an x-intercept has a y value of 0, so the x value was 5 fourths, the y value was 0. And this is a point that we can use with our slope in order to create our line. We'll start by writing our y equals mx plus b, and we'll substitute in our slope and our point. The x value is 5 fourths, the y value is 0, and the m value is negative 3 over 2. So we have 0 equals negative 3 over 2 
times our x value of 5 fourths, and we're going to solve for b. When multiplying negative 3 over 2 times 5 fourths, we multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. We also need to look to see if we can reduce or cancel any numerator with any denominator, but 3 can't reduce with 2 or 4, and neither can 5. 5 doesn't reduce with 2 or 4. So let's just multiply across. 3 times 5 is 15, so that's negative 15. 2 times 4 is 8, plus b. We still have the 0 over on the left. To get b by itself, we're going to move this negative 15 eighths over to the other side, so it becomes positive 15 eighths. And that's what b equals. Our y-intercept for our line is 15 eighths. We know the x-intercept too, it's 5 fourths. But now to come up with the equation of the line, we can simply use our slope, negative 3 over 2, and our y-intercept, 15 eighths. So writing our equation, y equals m negative 3 over 2 x plus b 15 eighths. That's the equation in slope y intercept form. We'll now move this into standard form by moving everything to the left. 3 halves x turns positive plus y, it's already positive, minus 15 eighths, it turns negative when it moves, equals 0. Our a value is positive, perfect, and now to get rid of the fractions we multiply by the lowest common multiple of the denominators, which is 8. So 3 halves will multiply by 8, I'm just going to throw some 8's in here, all these things are going to multiply by 8. including this 0. I'll write that in there too. So the 8 and 2 can reduce. They're going to reduce. This will turn to 4. This will turn to 1. The 8 will multiply to the y. This 8 will reduce with this 8. And 8 times 0 will just be 0. So we have 4 times 3 times x. 4 times 3 is 12x. 8 times y is 8y. And the 8's cancel here, so they're left, they become 1's when they cancel. So this is negative 1 times 15 is negative 15. And there we have our equation in standard form. This becomes pretty routine. These questions may just prove to be difficult because we need to figure out what our slope is going to be based on whether the line is parallel or perpendicular. Parallel slopes will be the same slope. Perpendicular slopes will be negative reciprocals. And then we may have to find another point. So if it's a y-intercept, great. That's easy to look for. An x-intercept, remember, we can set y equal to 0 and figure out what that is. Or maybe we're just lucky and they give us the point.